third current and circuits lesson, and we're going to look at series circuits. And series circuits, the way that they work, um, just remember from previous lesson, we always follow the convention of positive to negative terminal. Well, current has to throw th flow through resistor one, it has to flow through resistor two, it has to go through three and come back to the battery, and therefore we call this resistor one, two, and three based on that. Um, but this is series, you, you have to go, there's no other option but to go through every single resistor, and they're going to be in some sort of order. Another thing we're going to deal with in the future is parallel circuits. So this unit we're doing, we're looking at series circuits. So series have no branches. You only have one direction to flow all the way through. Whereas in a parallel circuit, we can have, we can go down this branch or we can go down this other parallel branch or we can go down this other parallel branch. And so the branching is what tells you with the parallel circuit. And you're going to deal with parallel circuits different than you deal with series circuits. Now, one thing you need to know is if you have a series circuit and you take out a light, what you do is you enhance open the circuit. So everything goes out as a result. It doesn't matter which light I take out. Any one of these lights I take out, all the rest of the lights are going to go out because there's no pathway back to the, the battery if this one's cut out. And it's not even going to flow to there. It's not going to flow at all because there's no electrical field to get the, those electrons moving. But we also just follow the positive flow. Um, whereas in, in, in parallel, so in this one, they're in parallel, you can still go and follow the current back here. You can still follow the current back there. And so there's, since there's a path back to the negative terminal of the battery, this one goes out, but the rest of them would stay on in parallel. And so once again, this, this slide is just talking about the convention. So a lot of times we'll call anything at the battery, we'll call either total. Sometimes you might see an EMF next to, uh, you know, like a voltage EMF. It just represents anytime you see anything other than one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever a number, you see anything other than one of those numbers like this, it's going to be at the power source. And we're going to deal with problems that we're going to talk about. We're going to have them at the battery as our, our power source. Now with voltage, we often call it a voltage drop because you have so many, so much voltage, so much this this uh, pressure to flow starting at the battery, and some of that would be used up going into the second one. Some more would be used up going to the third, and then by the time you get to the negative terminal of the battery, you would not want to have any more. And so think of voltage as this difference between the potential difference between this and that side. So from here and there, that's going to give this resistor a voltage, but these volts. The total volts at the battery are going to add up. So V1, V2, V3, if I knew that that was 2, 4, and 4, I know the total voltage. I could add them up, and I could find a total voltage of 10. Same thing as if, if you might know this, this, and this, and not know this. If you had to find that, you take the total, you subtract the 4 and the 4, you get 2 volts, and you could solve for, the, so for that last. And that's what this is getting at. Um, the reason why we have plus dot, dot, dot means, that just means if we had an extra, you know, couple of resistors, we could have other, you know, other components, other things we can add. And if we were missing resistors, let's say we didn't have this resistor, well, we would just get rid of that. This equation would be V total equals V1 plus V2. Okay, um, you are going to use, or you may use multimeters at some point in time, and you might see this designation. All this is, if we have a multimeter, it's going to look like a little device, you know, have a different settings for it. But if we were using a multimeter, it's called a multimeter because it measures many things. But if we were using it to measure volts, we would have two leads coming out of it, and we would have to attach one lead to this side of the resistor and one lead to that side of the resistor, and we would get a reading on here of two volts. And so this little de this de designation right there, that thing you see right there, it just represents how the testing of this resistor. So it actually is not a separate voltage, but if you ever see that with a little, you know, if you didn't see anything else and you just saw that, that they're really telling you what the voltage is between at this resistor. Or if I set it up so I'm, at, I'm detecting it at the battery, I'm going to be able to solve for the, or I'll be able to read off the total voltage. In this case, it would have been 10 volts um, off that multimeter if I was testing both sides of the battery. Now, you would not open up the circuit. You would just touch both sides of the resistor or both sides of the battery, and that would give you the voltage total or voltage at any single location. With current, 
current is going to be, if you know current anywhere, you know current everywhere. So if I knew current here at one, I know current there, 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 everywhere else. And current, you can think of current like a bunch, just a flow, like a car. Um, if you have two amps, that two amps has to go through everything. It's going to, that same two amps goes there, that same two amps goes here, the same two amps goes here, as you can see by my little animation of the two amps going around. And so if I know at one place there's only one road, since there's only one road, that in order for that that current to go from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, it has to flow through everything. And it's the same two amps, the same two amps. And that's why the total is two, not two plus two plus two. Now, if we are measuring it, we have our amp meter. So like before, we, we're going to measure, it's a multimeter, but we're going to use it to measure amps. We'll call it an amp meter. We'll have a certain setting. And what we have to do is something different. What we'd have to do is we'd have to open up the circuit and we'd have to have the current running through the amp meter. And so this current would go through the amp meter and it would read um, two amps because it would be detect that there's a flow through it and it would go through there. So we would just open up the circuit and let the current flow through the amp meter after we have the right settings. And this designation right here represents you opening up this, the, the circuit and using an amp meter to determine that there's two amps in this line right here, in this wire right here. But because there's two amps in this wire right here, we know that two amps went there and we know where the two amps came from. And because it's series, we also know where two amps is everywhere. So if you see that designation, for sure, as we go into parallel circuits, it tells you, you know, since there's only one path from the battery, it had to have been at the battery. If there's only one path to this, it had to have been over here. Um, that's a rule that you can kind of think of for all, for, for, for parallel circuits too, but for the sake of series, it was everywhere because there's only one path all the way around. For resistance, you can think of resistance as little speed bumps. If you have a car driving over a speed bump, each resistor is going to slow down the car, and it's going to slow it down by adding them all up. If you have three speed bumps, you're going to be slower than if you have two speed bumps. So for resistance, you can think of it like a speed bump. Um, the total is nothing more than the sum of all the different parts, all the different pieces you have in there. So let's go ahead and solve for the first problem. What's the total resistance of 4, 5, 2, and 2 ohms? in series and you would get 13 ohms when you add them together next question what about if i have if i don't know one of the resistors but i know that the total is 100 and i know i have a 10 and a 30 as well it doesn't matter if you call the one you don't know three one or two that's insignificant you just pick one i don't know what this is but i know that that's 30 and that's 10 so this is 40 total and if i add it to this it has to be 100 so 100 minus 40 and this would end up being 60 ohms as your resistor so now let's just look at an overall so there's going to be times where i'm going to use ohm's law and a reminder ohm's law is v equals ir it's probably not a bad idea to have a note card or something where you have v equals ir and then it rearrange i equals v over r and r equals v over i just having those on a note card would be very useful because then you can go through problems really quickly but i can use ohm's law in lo in any location but only one location at all uh, alone so if i know like v and r i can use that to solve for the the total current at the battery. If I know this R and this I, I, I can use that to solve for this V at the battery. Once again, on location. But what I can't do is I cannot use information here, here, and here. So at resistor 2 and at resistor 3 to determine information at resistor 1 using these these are only going to be at location, only where you see in, within the box that, that, are, that are read right here. If I have two out of three bits of information, I can solve for the third using Ohm's Law. And that's going to be one of the first things we turn to as we work through different problems. Now, if I'm using information, if I want to find the total voltage at the battery, and I'm using this voltage and that voltage and that voltage, well, I have to go to these rules. So these are the rules when you're using pieces of other like a resistor and this resistor to solve for something else in the circuit, you're always going to have to follow the series rules. And the general process to go through this, sometimes I kind of stray a little bit, but in general, this is going to be the easiest way. If you have two or three bits of information anywhere, you're going to use Ohm's law. Once again, they're one of the rearrange either to solve for current or either to solve for resistance or either to solve for voltage. Once again, I equals V over R. R equals V over I. So you could solve for any 
one of those things, if you have two other things at the location, try to check that. Do this first, and if you've done this and there's no two out of three pieces of the V equals IR equation at any one location, at any resistor or, or the battery, then you need to move on to something else. The next thing that's going to be the most useful, if you can solve for a current anywhere, that's going to be useful because if you can solve for current in one location, you know current everywhere. And that will often lead you back to doing a bunch of Ohm's Law at different locations to uh, solve for the rest of the pieces. And you'll see what I mean in a second when we do practice problems. But then lastly, if, if once we've done that, if we can't, if we've already done the current or we just can't find the current, we might take a look. What do we have a lot of? Do we have a lot of the voltages? Do we have a lot of the resistances? Well, you might want to go ahead and solve for a resistance or a voltage um, and then go from there. Often you're going back to one of these other steps um, and as we solve through. It, these are little puzzles. They're kind of fun. Let's go ahead and start with one right here. So if I look at any one location, there's not two out of three bits of information. Once again, two unknowns. I can't solve for a third unknown with two unknowns. I would need two knowns to solve for a third unknown. So I can't start there. But what I can start with is I have a lot of information about the resistors, and I can use that, and I can use the overall series circuit rules for resistance to solve for that total resistance. So I can, I know if I have 30, 40, and 10, I can add those up, and I get 80, and that gives me this set of information right here. So now you can take a look. Once again, I'm going back to the step one from before. Now I can go ahead and say, well, you know, I can use that to solve for current, and I can use um, the Ohm's law. When I do Ohm's Law, I find that's 2 amps. And you know what? That's pretty useful, too. Now that I know 2 amps, I know that that's going to flow everywhere throughout. So I know that 2 amps is going to flow there, that 2 amps is going to flow there, that 2 amps is going to flow here. So I'm pretty much done. Now I can just do Ohm's Law everywhere. And once I do Ohm's Law everywhere, there's going to be one final check you always want to do. So I can do Ohm's Law to find that. I can do Ohm's Law to find that. I can do Ohm's Law to find that. And so the last thing I did was I did Ohm's Law to find this last thing. And, and I'm going quick, so you should probably be trying to, once you catch on, you should probably pause the video and try to do these on your own. Anytime I'm going too quick for you, pause the video, try to do these on your own, and then, and then uh, make sure you, you, you know, own some of this. But this is the first example, so this is okay. Um, the last thing I solved for it was 20 volts using this bit of information to solve for that. Well, I want to make sure that it also follows a series of rules. So this is the final check to make sure that my answer is correct. And this is going to save you, um, it's going to help you get a good grade on the next quiz and on the next test, at least on these diagrams, because you can check your own work. Okay, does this also follow the series circuit rules? Does 80 plus 60 plus 20, does that equal 160? And that, I didn't solve for that. You know, I got this by using these two values. But if it also fits the rules right here, which it does, I know my answer is correct. I mean, I have to have done something weird to mess up and have it not correct still. So do that final check and that final check will help you get the answers right all the time. So in this problem, notice I have two out of three bits of information there. So I'm going to go to Ohm's Law and I find that that's two amps. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spread that out. That two amps is going to travel. It's going to, it started from the battery. It went to there. I just happened to know it there first, but it's going to be everywhere. Two amps, that same two amps. And from there, I now have two out of three bits of information there, two out of three bits of information there. So I can go to Ohm's Law, solve for the resistance. I can go to Ohm's Law on location, once again, using two out of three bits of information there to solve for the last thing. And that's good. I got that down. And now I could decide if I want to, if I rather solve for voltage or resistance. And I decided that I'm going to solve for voltage first. So I don't know three, but I know the total. I know one and I know two. So I can go ahead and 24 minus the 12 and minus the 8 gives me what the 3 was. And so that's going to be three, 4 volts. Once I have that, now I can do Ohm's Law. So go to Ohm's Law, um, V over I, 4 divided by 2, I get 2 ohms. And once I get 2 ohms, I want to make sure it does that final check. Does the 3 resistors, 4, 2, and 6, or 2, 4, and 6, does that end up equaling the 12? And 2, 4, and 6 does. If I add those two, the sum of 2, 4, and 6 equals 12. So I know that answer is correct. I just did a double check. This next problem, well, I don't have Ohm's Law. I can't use Ohm's Law anywhere. I don't have two or three bits of information anywhere. I only have one bit of information at every location. So I'm going to use something I have a lot of, which is this resistance. I can use this total and this 2 and this 3 to find resistance 1. 
And all I'm going to do is, well, if I have 5 and 2 and they have the total 10, well, I could just subtract 10 this is by 7, I get a 3 ohm resistor. So now I know that's 3 ohms. So I could do, I could just use ohms law in this location right here to solve for this current. So the 6 and the 3, I can go ahead and find that this is 2 amps. So once I know that that's 2 amps, now I can go ahead and spread it around. I know that that's 2 amps that's going to travel everywhere. And I can finish this off by doing Ohm's Law. Solving for, for a voltage there. Solving for voltage there. And solving for voltage here. And then I want to do my final check. I, I ended here. Let's make sure that 4 plus 10 plus 6 equals 20, and it does. So I have a double check. I just checked my answer, and I know that's correct. So that's good. Let's take a look at this next example. Okay, here, I can go ahead and solve for current right there. I know two out of three bits of information, so I go ahead and solve for current. I know that's two amps. Um, this ha just happens to be two amps in all these problems. Uh, it's not going to be the case all the time. It just was a, a fluke when I made these samples. It just happened to be that there were two amps. So it might be three, it might be five, it might be something else. So don't always just write down two like it's going to be two all the time. Just want to make that note real quick. So I can decide where I want to go next. Um, I could have solved for the resistance there. I could have solved for the resistance there. But what I did in this example is I just started at a different place. It doesn't really matter what you do next as long as it works. And so I can use the total, the two, and uh, this should say three. I'm going to go back and fix that. The total, the two, and the three, I can use that to solve for this one right here. And so I know that 160 must equal to the V1 plus 40 plus 60. So that's going to be 6, 160 minus 40 plus 80 or minus 120. So that's going to be 40 volts. So now I know that's 40 volts. I can do Ohm's law to solve for that, 20 ohms. I can do Ohm's law there to solve for that. Once again, I have two out of three bits of information. I'm only using information on location to solve for that third bit of information. The Ohm's law. So I have that, I have that, and then I can go ahead and do Ohm's Law over here. I get 80, and now let's just do the final check. So the final check says, let's go ahead and let's just make sure that 80, which is at the battery, should be the total of 20 plus 20 plus 40, which it is. So 20 plus 20 plus 40 equals 80, so that's correct. So I solved it using Ohm's Law, and I also solved it using this information doing that final check to make sure that this is correct, and it is.